This is part one of the presentation series on essentials of the 2015 revision of ISO 9001. In this presentation, we will introduce the 2015 revision of the standard and then look at clauses one through five. I'm Terry McCann. ISO 9001 is often referred to simply as the standard which saves repeated references to ISO 9001 2015. Within the document, the standard refers to itself as this standard or this international standard. Chapters or sections are referred to as clauses. The actual requirements only begin in clause four. In this international standard, the following verbal forms are used. Shall indicates a requirement. Should indicates a recommendation. May indicates a permission. Can indicates a possibility or a capability. Information marked as note is for guidance in understanding or clarifying the associated requirement. Clause zero is an introduction that briefly describes the process approach adopted by the standard. It takes customer and other requirements or predecessor processes as input and delivers product or services as output to be input to subsequent processes and ultimately as a product or service for customer satisfaction. There is also an expectation to use the PDCA or Plan Do Check Act methodology within the process approach for implementation of the Quality Management System or QMS and various forms of improvement. Importantly, Clause zero also introduces risk-based thinking as a strategy to be incorporated into the process approach when implementing the organization's QMS. Clause one titled scope describes what meeting the standard is meant to achieve for an organization in terms of meeting customer and regulatory requirements and enhancing customer satisfaction. Clauses two and three cover terminology with a view to understanding the language in the standard, but not requiring an organization to necessarily use those terms in its QMS documentation. Clause four, context of the organization. 4.1, understanding the organization and its context. Here, the management of the organization needs to show evidence of due diligence in having developed a strategy that takes all relevant factors into account in an ongoing and dynamic way. Most healthy, mature organizations have been doing this for years without needing a standard such as this one to tell them. For example, before preparing their annual budget, Mature organizations will review and make tweaks to their strategy after doing some sort of analysis, such as, for example, a SWOT analysis. Every few years, they will do a three or five year strategic plan, perhaps at a retreat somewhere. This revision of the standard has introduced this best practice as a requirement to demonstrate that the organization has done its due diligence to identify internal and external issues relevant to formulating strategy in achieving its purpose. 4.2, understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. A lot of people and entities could be considered interested parties, for instance, shareholders and owners of the business, government agencies and regulators, clients and customers, employees and their families, trade union, suppliers and partners, emergency services like firefighters, police, ambulance, etc. And then there are media. However, we only need to identify those interested parties and their requirements that are relevant to the QMS because they have an effect or potential effect on the organization's ability to meet product or service requirements. Of course, this information needs to be kept current. 4.3, determining the scope of the quality management system. With this revision of the standard, an organization needs to be more explicit in documenting what is in scope for its QMS and what is not. 
in scope, products and services offered by the organization, requirements of identified interested parties, applying risk-based thinking to the opportunities, benefits and threats identified under clause 4.1 above, namely understanding the organization and its context. Out of scope, any requirement of the standard that does not affect the organization's ability or responsibility to ensure the conformity of its products and services and the enhancement of customer satisfaction. However, it is not enough simply to state that it does not. A fuller justification for the statement needs to be provided. Geographical locations and functional departments can also be documented as in or out of scope. 4.4 Quality Management System and its Processes The essence of 4.4 is that an organization must have a documented system of processes for quality management, which the standard calls a quality management system, shortened to QMS, as well as documented evidence to give confidence that the QMS processes are being carried out as directed. Being a system of interactive processes, the standard requires determination of inputs, outputs, sequence and interaction of processes, resources, roles and responsibilities, criteria for success and effectiveness, risks, mitigations and controls, plans for evaluation, review and improvement. In the previous revision, this was the quality manual and its sub-processes. The documented QMS is the whole set of policies, processes and procedures required for an organization to satisfactorily conduct its business in meeting its commitments to customers and clients and regulators. Clause 5, Leadership. 5.1, Leadership and Commitment. When it comes to roles and responsibilities, that of an organization's top management is thrust front and center when it comes to this revision of ISO 9001. There is a well-known aphorism, not only must justice be done, it must also be seen to be done. In a similar way, the standard requires the top management of an organization not only to exercise leadership and commitment with regard to the QMS, but also to demonstrate that leadership and commitment in some very specific ways that require evidence, such as holding themselves accountable for the QMS and ensuring its effectiveness in achieving intended results, prudently using risk-based thinking and a process approach with continual improvement. After consideration of the organization's context, to set strategic direction supported by quality objectives in accordance with the quality policy. Ensuring sufficient resources, including competent human resources. The standard signals the importance of top management demonstrating their commitment to meeting customer requirements and enhancing customer satisfaction by giving this top management responsibility its own subclause titled Customer Focus. 5.2 Policy Top management is required to set a quality policy. It is not sufficient to print this up, frame it and put it on a wall. Not that there is anything wrong with displaying it prominently, but above all it needs to be implemented by providing a framework for strategic quality objectives and communicated to all within the organization and other relevant parties to effectively obtain commitment to meeting quality and regulatory requirements and foster a culture of continual quality improvement. Used rightly, the quality policy calls forth the cultural mindset within which the organization's strategy gets played out with the quality objectives for various management levels, departments and functions. 5.3 Organizational Roles, Responsibilities and Authorities One of the elements of any process is to identify all the human players. Notable among these players is the person responsible for the process. 
It is the responsibility of top management to ensure that each process has such a person with the necessary authority and accountability to ensure the process is effective in delivering the intended output, culminating in the satisfaction of customers and reporting on process performance as desirable. This concludes part one of the presentation series on essentials of the 2015 revision of ISO 9001. Stay tuned. I hope to release part two in the second week of February 2016. Part two will look at the essential elements of clause six on planning. I'm Terry McCann. If you have questions or comments, please email me at the address at the bottom of your screen. I would love to hear from you.